Hey everyone, so in this video I'll be explaining how this electronic load works. I'll tell you how I made it and how you can make your own. And I'll go over all the, um, the details and the theory behind it. So to begin with, I'll show you how, to, how it works. We have to give it supply for the control circuit. This takes uh, between 6 and 12 volts, anything's good. Basically the minimum of 6 is because the linear regulator needs six or a little bit over that to um, provide five volts to the op amps and nothing over 12 because the fans directly connected to what we're giving it so as you can see i gave it six volts and the fan is barely spinning now uh, if i increase this it will speed up a little fan helps it cool down obviously and it's uh, important when we're passing a lot of current through it so to connect the supply, we just attach the positive to anywhere on the, on the heat sink and the negative, we connect to this wire right here. I should probably solder a better wire on, but I didn't have any time, so I'll probably do that later. And this works pretty well, actually. This is a current meter that measures up to 10 amps and we'll be monitoring the current through it. And then on this multimeter, I'll be looking at the voltage of the supply. As you can see now, we have almost exactly 5 volts coming from the supply. This is a switch mode power supply, and that can deliver quite a bit of current, actually. So you can see by increasing or turning this potentiometer, the uh, current starts rising. We're at 1 amp now. And I could actually bring this all the way up to 10 amps and we'll probably give some more actually um, and you can see that when the current increases the voltage decreases a little bit I think this is because of the internal resistances of the supply keep in mind that at 10 amps the the voltage across even a 0.1 ohm cable will be of one volt, so very small resistances can uh, drop the output voltage by a, a fair amount, actually. And um, anyway, this is it working. There's a second potentiometer underneath. Basically, by turning this, we can adjust the sensitivity of the main potentiometer. Now, if I can find a screwdriver, so as you can see now, I'll put it at zero. And um, if I turn the potentiometer under here to the left, it will make the, the main one less sensitive. As you can see, I turn it all, to, all the way to the right and it's uh, a little over one amp. Now if I turn it back to zero and uh, increase this, all the way over to halfway, you can see a small difference on, on the main one, gives a big difference in the current. This, is, this makes it easier to control current over wider ranges and also very finely for smaller supplies. Now the funny thing is that this heat sink is not really warming up almost at all. It's barely warm, I can feel it. I touch it here but it's probably not over 30 degrees Celsius in fact if I put my finger here on the MOSFETs and I'll show you where they are later on they're barely warm it's still running 10 amps as you can see right here the things that are getting the hottest are these shunt resistors that are actually getting pretty hot in fact I burn myself if I touch them too long and uh, this might seem strange, but if we look at the math, um, the power being dissipated through each one is about 1.4 watts each. In fact, if we divide 10 amps going through four of the resistors, we get 2.5 amps each. And the power formula is current squared times resistance. So 2.5 squared is 6.25 times 
22 ohms. Each resistor is 1.375 watts. And I think these shunt resistors are rated for one watt. So it explains why they get kind of hot. The way the circuit works is very simple. We have a MOSFET controlling the current here and a shunt resistor giving us a feedback voltage as to how much current is flowing. The feedback voltage feeds into a op amp like this into the non-inverting input or sorry the inverting input and the output goes directly to the MOSFET gate. I decided to give it a 5 volt steady supply but that really doesn't matter much. To control the input voltage we give it, I use two potentiometers as I showed you before. What is important is that this 5 volts is very steady. For that I use an LM7805 naturally, it's pretty popular. Um, that's because if the voltage here changes just a little bit, the input to the op amp will change too, and thus the current flowing through the whole system here. And a uh, small voltage actually changes a lot. For powering the fan, I decided to just connect it to the 6 to 12 volts. Minimum is 6 because the linear regulator can't give 5 with 5. It has to drop a little bit. It's not perfect naturally. By varying this input voltage here, I can change the speed of the fan uh, based on what I prefer. For example, for the video, I was keeping it a little bit low so it doesn't make noise. But if there's a lot of current flowing through, I keep it to 12 to have more cooling. So first thing, you have to choose your heat sink. I went with this one because it's the only one with a copper base, and that's very important because I decided to solder the transistors directly onto it. And as you probably know, you can't solder onto aluminum. The MOSFETs I used were the PHD108NQ03LT, but you can use any N-channel MOSFET you want. These have a maximum drain to source voltage of 25 volts, which is something I'll have to be careful about in the future when using it, and they have a maximum dissipation power of 180 watts. To solder the MOSFETs onto the heat sink, I first have to bend the two pins upwards so that they don't contact the copper and short. After that, I just put six spots of flux on the heat sink where I'll put the transistors. With a hot air gun, I'll heat it up over the melting temperature of solder, and then I'll put six spots of solder on there, one for each transistor. When the solder is completely melted, I position the six transistors and use a PC fan to cool everything down quicker. Then I use a piece of copper board to make all the connections. All the gates and sources of the MOSFETs connect separately onto the copper board and a common ground strip is left. After that, I connect the shunt resistors between sources and the common ground. On a piece of perf board, I solder on the quad op amp and make sure to make a common ground connection as well. The last thing to do is solder on the linear regulator and the two potentiometers for controlling the current. The little fan was taken out from a PC, I think, and it connects to the two power entrances to the control circuit. I used some spacers to keep everything neat. Keep in mind that anything conductive connected to the heatsink is also connected to the drains of the MOSFETs. This means that it will be connected to the positive side of the supply that we want to test. With that done, it's finished and you can now test your electronic load. I'd recommend that before you build the thing, you would think of how much current you want to pass through it, and based on that, you choose your shunt resistors. This is because if you want to pass a lot of current, you'll have to use very low value shunts to prevent them from overheating. If instead you want to have smaller currents but control them more accurately, use higher value shunt resistors, for example, half an ohm. So I know that I skipped over some details. In fact, if you want more information or if something isn't clear to you, feel free to write in the comments and I'll try to answer everything as clearly as possible. Anyway, I hope you liked this video, learned something new. If so, leave a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.